this next plant I'm going to talk about uh, is one of my favorite first aid remedies, which a lot of these are, hence I'm covering these uh, plants. But I feel it very useful uh, in, a, in a wide variety of circumstances, but mostly related to infections. So the plant is berberus. The berberuses are often called Oregon grape roots or barberries. There are some discrepancy over the genus of the plant. So the family is the Berberidaceae. The Berberidaceae are closely related to the Ranunculaceae, the buttercups. Though the Berberidaceae is the barberry family, the Ranunculaceae is the buttercup family, very closely related. And like the buttercups, uh, there are some really good medicines in the Berberidaceae, uh, but pretty much nothing to eat offhand. So, for instance, an exception would be may apples, where you can eat the Podophyllum peltatum, where you can eat the ripe fruit, but the rest of the plant is pretty uh, poisonous. So that's a Berberidaceae as an example, relating it to the Ranunculaceae as far as families that are very useful medicinally, but not so good for straight out food. So this plant is Berberus. The Berberuses can be the Oregon grape roots, and to some people, uh, and it's, it's by some people I mean a lot of people. The Oregon grape roots are in the genus Mahonia. Uh, and then the other plants called the barberries are in the genus Berberus. Uh, I, tend to, I tend to go with a more modern definition and call them all Berberuses, uh, though it's just a matter of who you're learning from. Uh, it's just a matter of who you're learning from. So, but I am talking about all those plants called Oregon grape roots. Mostly if they're in the west and northwest, they're called Oregon grape roots. Uh, the two main ones are Berberis or Mahonia, Aquifolium, and Berberis nervosa. In the Rocky Mountains, there's a very common species that's much smaller than those two, and that's called Creeping Barberry, and that's Berberis repens. Uh, in the southwest of the United States, often growing in some intractable land, you have another, or you have two more Oregon grape roots, but uh, you have two more Oregon grape roots. But down there, they tend to be called Algorita or Agerita. Those are the common names, though people who study with herbalists often call them Oregon grapes. And those are Berberis hematocarpa, hematocarpa, which means blood fruit, and Berberis uh, trifoliolata. So in the southwest, it's more species than that, but the two most common are Berberis trifoliolata, Algorita or Agerita, and Berberis hematocarpa. I just want to say that those two are my favorites. As far as the medicines, um, I like those two. I find them much stronger. So when I'm in the Southwest, I try to gather the roots, which we'll talk about because it's tricky to wildcraft these plants. It's just hard to get the roots out. And then here in the Northeast and in further south of the Northeast and the East, we have the two non-native barberries, Berberis thunbergii, which is Japanese barberry, and then the European barberry, which is uh, Berberis vulgaris. Are you all following this? It's a lot of Berberus in here. So Berberus vulgaris. Um, and I tend to use the most common of those two, the European and Japanese barberries, which is Berberus thunbergii. That plant, Japanese barberries, is very common and very, very weedy and really pretty invasive. So I like to gather it because I like to gather invasive plants uh, because I'm not hurting any populations. There's one more East Coast plant, and I've never seen it. And so I would never gather it, but I would sure take a lot of photos if I saw it. And that's Berberis canadensis. And that's our native barberry, but I've never seen the native barberry, even though I've looked for it uh, in different places. I'm not sure how different it would look. So if you should know, you know, it's important to understand botany so you don't gather rare plants, but that's a very uncommon Berberis. So all of those but it will exclude Berberis canadensis. But all the other ones, which is just uncommon, all the others make pretty good medicine. And as you can hear from their genus, that's the genus of the plants, because you can hear from their genus, they all contain the substance, berberine. Many plants with antibiotic actions and yellow pigmentation, because berberine is a yellow colored alkaloid. In fact, uh, most alkaloids don't have any color, and berberine is one of the rare exceptions of an alkaloid with color, and it's, of course, a beautiful yellow color. Golden seal uh, showing it very well. The different family, the ranunculaceae here. So the reason I like the Oregon grape roots and the barberries is that they're pretty common. 
right? The Berberis, the southwestern ones, Algarita, Ageritas, the Berberis hematocarpa, and Trifoliolata are pretty weedy in places. They're native, but they're weedy. And so they could just, I feel pretty good about gathering them, you know, taking all wild crafting ethics into consideration. Um, whereas other plants that are rich in berberine, like golden seal, are uncommon, or things like gold thread are just tiny and a lot of work to gather even a small amount, and they just occupy much smaller uh, areas, and so doing less ecological harm. So I like the Oregon grape roots because of their commonness, and I like the Oregon grape roots um, because they work really well. So some people consider them analogs of golden seal. Analog means it works like it, of golden seal. I would say there are some places where golden seal and Oregon grape root have overlap or berberus, um, but I also think they have places where each does the, a different job a little bit better. For instance, I think golden seal hydrastis is a little bit better for sinus infections, and Oregon grape root, berberus species, barberries, are a little better for digestive infections. That's one situation where I consider using them differently. So I'm going to mention a wild crafting technique that's not commonly employed, and I didn't mention it before. But if you looked in my car on the rooftop carrier where I carry wild crafting tools, you would notice a set of chains. And the reason for it is that Oregon grape roots, really they're called Algarita or Agerita here in the Southwest, not here in the Southwest, but in the Southwest, uh, they grow, they can grow near roads, really, you know, secondary or tertiary roads. So in other words, roads with little traffic, but it's really hard to get their big roots out. So one way to get their roots out, and one way of wild crafting that probably John will get letters from, and maybe me as well, uh, decrying this practice. John will just forward the letters to me. I'm editing it out. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, the one way to, to work this is that you tie a chain. It's got to be a chain onto the back of your car, you know, whatever, making sure it's not a part that comes off, like your fender, onto an axle, and then put the other at the base of the plant. So I'm saying that these plants are pretty common, and they can grow pretty close to roads that are unpolluted. And so basically taking that chain, I have one picture, it's not very good, I can, I can post, <laughs> just tying, you know, hooking the chain onto the bottom of the plant, and as the car pulls forward, you get some digging forks and you slowly lift it. So the car is just not rampaging everywhere, right? And that way you can get a really big root. Usually, by the way, when you get those roots, you need axes so and saws to bring them down to size. I mean, there's no way you're going to whittle those things down with a pocket knife. But that way, one plant gives me a lot of medicine, and it saves a lot of time. If I would have dug it out, it would take you know a day or two, and I'd probably leave off pieces. And honestly, I'd probably do more harm because I'd have to be in the same area digging, digging, digging. So one other way of wild. So, so you're hearing me talking about wild crafting with chains and cars. I'm hoping that this not, not become some kind of jackass adventure, jackass being the TV show, where everybody is all of a sudden wild crafting oak trees and old growth forests with this. So please be considerate if you're going to do this method. But I, you know, I mean, why, why bullshit about it, right? It is helpful and much quicker to do it this way and probably saves your body a lot of time. And I don't know if, I don't think you're doing any more harm at all. It's not like I'm driving onto some, you know, some beautiful grassy meadow that's never, that's untouched. Basically getting it from hard packed soils, uh, usually with cows around them, honestly, ranches. So that's how I gather the plant and I chop it up. Uh, fresh and dried work great. So Oregon grape root and berberises and barberries, uh, it doesn't matter if they're fresh and dry or when you tincture them. So you can dry them for tea later. You can tincture them fresh or dried. They might be a little bit stronger fresh. But the, if you, once you know your medicine making, you can save money by drying them and tincturing them at less percentage of alcohol. You can also make oils from Oregon grape roots. So the barberries, the berberuses, uh, just cutting them up. In this case, I would do it fresh and soaking them in oil until you can see that clear yellow color, the berberine coming out of them. And so now you have oils and you can make salves out of them. Um, and you can dry them as an anti-infective tea. So I haven't talked much about how to use them, but I have said there's a, the, they work as tea, tincture, and oils, so they have a plethora of uses here. They're really very useful in that way. There are other uses for the berberuses that I won't cover here, but you can look into them. Some studies say that they actually increase uh, hepatocyte function, so liver function, it might be something to consider as well. Also, though, when you hear increasing hepatocyte function, you have to worry a little bit. Will they affect drugs that people take where the drugs are affected by
by the same enzyme pathways that this increases, and so therefore eliminating the drug faster. So if that makes sense to you, you can follow through on it. Uh, but it's one consideration when you have things that increase hepatocyte uh, function. Berberis kills a wide range of bacteria. It's not the strongest, but it's a pretty safe one. So I've used it with staph infections. Usually, though, with staph infections, you have to do a couple of different plants and a couple of different applications. It's not easy to kill staph. And of course, some staphs are very resistant. But even though they might be MRSA, methicillin resistant staph, it doesn't mean they're necessarily resistant to some of the plants we use for staph infections. So I just want to put that out there if you're working with staph. And staph is a very common bacterial infection. In first aid, it's probably the, one of the most common bacterial infections that you see externally. So you can use this externally with for staph infections, usually with the other herbs, changing them out. And also you can use the berberuses for internal infections. And internal infections, I mean some of those waterborne and foodborne uh, pathogens that I mentioned when I talked about activated charcoal. So things like Giardia, Cryptosporidium, Entamoebas, so those kinds of, even salmonella poisonings. So some of those bacterial, those are, by the way, mixed bacterial and protozoas. Uh, sometimes Oregon grapefruit really helps. So by Oregon grapefruit, I keep saying it, but I really just mean Berberus species and Mahonia species, if you use that appellation. Um, I also like to use it as a preventative. So if I'm nervous about drinking water, and I just kind of want to get my gut up and have a kind of an anti-infective dose already going there, I sometimes just chew the Oregon grapefruit or just put it in my water and drink it. So if I'm going someplace where the water is a little suspect, I'll, I will do my best to boil the water and to disinfect it. I just don't want to get sick from bad water. But sometimes if there's any, if there's any chance, I just will dose myself, will take a lot of Oregon grapefruit. And I would suggest if you're traveling to have berberous chewing steps, sticks. So basically, gather your Oregon grapefruits or your algaritas or your barberries and just dry them. And like you would have a licorice stick, have these. And if you're traveling and you know that you get uh, bacterial infections easy traveling from food and water, I suggest just chewing the Oregon grapefruit sticks. It will color things yellow. Not as strongly as activated charcoal colors things black, but it's really useful that way too. It's hard to tell how that works, by the way. Prevention is very hard to prove. And so, but it's something that I do. I do it mostly in events where I'm worried about the water, not so much traveling. Often when I'm traveling, I try to find what other people have done in order to prevent uh, gastric infection. Uh, so you can use all these forms, the oil form. Oils on a wound are always a little precarious because if you put oil on an infection, some bacteria that live will, will thrive in the now lessened aerobic environment. So if you have an infection and you put an oil on it, you have to, the materials in the oil have to be strong enough because what you're doing is you're basically putting, a, you're putting a, a, a protective layer over the bacteria potentially with your oils. So just make sure that your medicinal oils are strong enough where if you do that, at least the herb quality is strong enough to also kill the infective matter. So intestinal bacteria, uh, wound washes, uh, also, gum rinses, if you have bacteria in your gums and you have infection in there. Uh, Oregon grapefruit is a great tooth rinse, just getting a bunch of berberis in there, making strong medicines, teas or tinctures, and swishing that around. And those are the main ways that I use the plant. So there are other chronic health care issues that you can use it for, but once again, just a great disinfecting antibacterial uh, for a wide range of uses in first aid. Also, once again, though, with colds and flus, even though colds and flus are respiratory viruses, respiratory viruses are often accompanied by secondarily by bacterial infections. So if you have a respiratory virus, you also might want to consider the Oregon grapefruit. It might do something to stimulate innate immunity for the respiratory virus, but also might help uh, kill any bacteria that are lingering for a part of a bacterial infection. And so I hope everybody here has a good understanding of how to use uh, Berberus species. Mm -hmm.